Hey everybody, it's Ixie and welcome back to my channel where basically I just analyze Nine Inch Nails music and wear weird colors of lipstick. Today I'm analyzing The Great Below, which is also on The Fragile. It's just such a masterpiece, I can't help it. Also, I had a poll on my Instagram and I was asking folks if they thought I should analyze The Great Below or March of the Pigs. And it was a 50-50 split, but March of the Pigs is like, whoa, and I just kind of want to ease into it. We're going to start with The Great Below and work our way up to chaos. The way I would characterize this song is it's sort of like a dirge. He's seems to be exploring depression and suicide through the metaphor of the ocean. I also think though that he's really bringing in these qualities of like surrender and acceptance versus giving up, it's kind of returning to source. And I think that what he's doing harmonically really makes us feel like there is a tenderness and hopefulness to this really dark subject. So when I analyze a piece of music, I first like to figure out what key it's in and then what scale it's using. This one, wow, it's interesting. I'm not actually sure what key it's in. I wanna say it's in A minor, then modulating to D minor, but it's not just your garden variety A minor. He's borrowing an A major chord or the major third from A major a lot, so much so that it kind of feels like home. However, there are all these other clues that it's really an A minor. And as a reminder, minor keys tend to sound dark. A minor, A major. And he's once again playing with this juxtaposition and all centered, I think, around this major or minor third. There's another harmonic quality though to this key that's unusual, which is a flat major two chord. These two chords next to each other is called the Neapolitan. I can't remember why. Not the ice cream, though now I want ice cream. So in terms of the chord progression, I'm not sure what chords he's really implying, but I can assume it's a major, B flat major, and G minor, but it could be major. It's not definitive. By the way, just to comment on the instrumentation and the production, the drone that starts the song sounds like something's wrong with it. If you listen to it, you'll hear it. It's like, mm -hmm. not every instrument sounds like that, but a lot of them do. There are these stringy sounding synths that your brain recognizes as strings, but then there's something off about them. There's also a piano at one point that sounds like maybe it's broken. It's really, really clinky, and it's not very tonal or musical. What does that mean? I'm not sure, but it definitely puts you off a little bit. If I were to play the scale, the seven notes that Trent is using in this piece, I think it would sound like this. That's different. There's something really old sounding about that, you know, like that comes from the beginning of humanity. That already sounds foreboding. Whenever you have minor seconds next to each other, they're being played at the same time or consecutively, it definitely creates this feeling of like, there's a darkness here. That's such a tight squeeze. Once again, he starts off with a bass line that's memorable, even though it's so, so simple. Right away, you get an example of this third, this raised third, which is called a Picardy third. They just Picardy it from the major key and plopped it in. Gorgeous. So it sounds so sweet, but then not so sweet, not so pleasant. Very dissonant. Trent tone. There it is. Very unstable. Ooh. Now that's nice too. The reason that this note, this is F, sounds kind of unusual is because he's establishing this sense of A major with this major third. That note does not belong in the A major scale. It's this one. So it's just unusual, it's unexpected, it's mystical. His voice comes in at the same time as one of those sort of off-sounding string synths. 
and the strings are doing something interesting that I want to point out. This is an approximation of the notes they're playing. So it's an octave, a fourth, and a third. Oh, wait, is that a major third? Nope, it's a minor third. But the way that the strings sound when they hit this note, it's ambiguous if they're playing that note or the major third because it goes, uh, uh, uh. It slides, it like slides from minor to major. It's really quick, but if you listen closely, you'll hear it. So it's more like, dun, dun, uh, uh, uh. He did the same thing to us. He didn't do it to us. He gave us the gift of uncertainty. He did the same thing in Just Like You Imagine with this guitar that's bending and these other, these clashing notes that are so close together that are usually very defining and orienting. And he's like, I don't want you to know where you are. Now with his voice, he is singing the minor third. So yeah, we're confused now. But it's important that he does this because he's got to orient us to the fact that, no, this is actually an A minor. This is sad and dark. I'm hopeless. <laughs> but you still have that memory of that really sweet guitar. I haven't analyzed enough Nine Inch Nails music yet to say this with certainty, but I'm going to guess that there are a lot of songs of his where he plays with this major minor juxtaposition with the third to disorient us and to bring hope when it feels hopeless. Looking up through the water and seeing some light coming through, that's what the thirds feel like to me in this song. During the verse, he has a vocal harmony, which is so pretty. He's singing in his falsetto, so it's really gentle. All the world has closed her eyes, tired faith all worn thin. For all we could have done, and all we could have been. Before, it was the tonic when he sung this, and the world has closed her eyes, that's home. And then when he modulates, we're still here. So suddenly that note that was home is now no longer home, but it's still a place of arrival because fifths are stable AF. Now we're established in A minor with a Picardy third, and then he modulates, which means changes key. So it's like taking your home and relocating it to a different city. Whoa, so this is where we've been. And suddenly we're here. Ooh. Destiny I've chose. That's cool. Anytime you modulate and you change keys in a song, it's interesting because it doesn't happen a lot. The very bottom of the ocean. Now maybe there's hope. Maybe not. Da, 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 da. Let's talk about that. So I'm just going to strip away the chords for now so you can hear with the bass line. He loves those ninths, and so do I. That's what's implied. That's what he's singing. A lot of tension. That wants to resolve down. But it doesn't. But we'll also note that he's singing off the beat. It's syncopated, and he could have just been like, me close. That's not as interesting as Ocean pulls me close. While he's singing, there's something happening that you might not notice, which is a really beautiful synth that's panning, and this is essentially what it's doing.
That's really beautiful because the bass line is descending and this synth is ascending. Oh, I love that. That's reaching. Now the song builds like a wave. The peak of the wave is when he sings up an octave and he's struggling a little bit. He's really belting it out and it's his signature Trent sort of scream singing, but it's a great way to build energy to show that this is really painful, this is really hard. It's very relatable. Take my place in the great below. Okay, so now that I've ruined my voice, <laughs> ow, going all the way back up here, we go here. That's an interesting relationship. Those chords are often not really together. Gosh, does that sound good. We're back at A minor major and this really cool guitar comes in. It almost sounds again like it's from another country. Just the tone of it. Landing here, which is very stable. This is the fifth degree of the, of the key. Now what's gonna happen? go up here because these notes are not really in that chord okay. oh, I love the crunch so much if he continued the exact same pattern that he was doing here when he goes here then it would sound like this first of all that's a tritone so you would expect that from him it goes to the fifth, and the fifth is very orienting. I think it's really nice, but then he goes back. He goes back to the original pattern right after that. And the song ends with him just repeating over and over again. I can still feel you even so far away. There's also percussion that comes in and ooh, it's groovy. The song ends similarly in that you're not really sure where you are doesn't end on one, it doesn't have any sort of real clear tonal quality. Sort of kind of sounds like this tritone. And this note, I think, or this note, or it's, it's not clear. So that's a really interesting choice too, because you know, it doesn't arrive. I don't know if this is gonna be like a little mini segment, but I thought it would be cool to point out a few things that you might have missed when listening to the song. One is when the vocal comes in, the bottom falls out. That drone goes away, and what you're left with is this really soft, short note just to tell you where the bass line is, but it's really, really subtle. It is enough though. The other thing that happens is that on the beginning of some of those measures, there's sort of this like really soft rumbling heartbeat sound. Another cool thing that you might hear is almost like a breathing noise or maybe a hissing. It pans and it comes in on beat two. It's really subtle, but I think anytime that you imitate something really human like that, like a heartbeat or a breath, I think it's snacked. It snacktivates. <laughs> it snacktivates our nervous system. My nervous system is snacktivated now. I'm hungry. <laughs> also, the processing on his vocal, very little reverb on his voice, but it sort of sounds like he's inside your head. It's really present. A lot of reverb, it creates distance. It starts to make things sound further away from you. So while keeping it really dry, it's like he's right here and he doesn't even have to sing very loud. It's also sort of as if they cut some of the high sort of exciting frequencies of the voice. You could still hear his like breathiness, but it almost sounds like he's singing to you through a radio or something. I kind of picture myself like on the surface or somewhere else in the ocean and he's singing this suicide note to us through this intercom or this radio. I'm sure I'm reading too far into it, but I, I thought that was an interesting choice. If you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. YouTube, YouTube, and I hope that you will tune in next week. Step right up. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.